I'll, I'll thank Deputy Francis Noel Duffy in the first instance for um, um, allowing me to step into his slot. Uh, thank you very much for your presentations. I hope the, the Limerick delegation will forgive me if I focus in a more parochial way on the, uh, on the Waterford um, representatives, but looking around the table, there will be plenty of time for Limerick questions, I imagine, as well. Um, Michael and Ivan, I just I want to acknowledge at the start uh, the level of work that's happened in terms of the affordable housing schemes that are coming on stream. 179 homes, um, repair and lease, and it's well acknowledged that you're leading the way in that. And, and maybe slightly tangential, but I think it's worth mentioning that the work that the Integrated Homelessness Service on Parnell Street do. And Ivan, you mentioned that even, even our emergency accommodation in Waterford, we strive for an own door. Um, emergency accommodation for families, and, and that's testament to some of the work that happens there. Um, I have quite a number of issues I'd like to get to, but I'm going to start first of all uh, in terms of the demand for one-bed properties. So I see that in, in the graphs that you presented, you know, that's the place where the demand is seriously outstripping the supply. And I want you to talk to me about the difficulties we face in terms of, if, if we're trying to provide one bed accommodation for people, um, we should ideally, I suppose, be looking at apartment blocks. Is it possible to make the development of apartment accommodation stand up financially in a Waterford context? Is, is that one of our sticking points? Is it one of the things that are standing in our way? I demand I go on. Yeah, um, like I suppose it would be common with most local authorities, the greatest level of demand on the housing list is for one and two beds, particularly one beds. Um, without harking back to the repair and lease scheme too often, it has been very fruitful for us in delivering one and two beds. Um, we have, we've, I, I suppose in terms of apartments, Deputy O'Cossack, we've kind of focused on smaller apartment developments rather than going hell for ladder and going for multi-storey, two or three storey. We can, we can make work within the department's uh, ceilings. And actually we have one scheme which is nearing completion in the city, which is a combination of one and two beds. Uh, so we've, we've factored delivery of one and two bed into our capital programme and we've supplemented that with the repair and lease scheme. Okay, very good. Um, and I, no deputy... Com I uh, Senator, sorry, Michael. Can I deputy okay, look. Um, there, is, there is an issue, I have no doubt about it, with the cost of construction of apartments, particularly where you want density and you're looking to go to four or five floors or over. Um, in Waterford, to give a context on that, You'd be looking at a construction cost for a two-bedroom apartment at the moment of about 400,000. Mm -hmm. The reality is you're competing with a 300,000 semi-D out the road. Creekonahan, the other elements here, will certainly assist in doing that. But whether uh, the gap is closed fully as of yet is, is difficult to know. But we'll certainly be actively pursuing the Creekonahan and the other measures that are being put in place by government. Um, but that essential issue still exists, if you know what I mean, in terms of in our marketplace. That would be completely different, obviously, in Dublin or some of the larger cities. But in our marketplace, that's the simple reality of the conflict, if you know what I mean. OK. Just to broaden it out from the city, and I know the preponderance of the demand would be within the city, but there is real constraint uh, along the coast, as you've identified in your, your opening statement. So... Uh, Tremor and Dungarvan obviously are the, the, the bigger population centres, but also the likes of Dunmore, I see there's only only planned for nine uh, total social homes to be delivered in your future programme master summary for Dunmore East, something similar for uh, the likes of Ardmore, for example. Um, are we confident that we're going to be able to meet demand? I know that there's constraint even in terms of land ownership within Tremor. Are we confident that we're going to be able to meet demand because, I mean, there is significant demand for social housing within those within those towns? Yeah, look, the delivery plan was uh, prepared based on the, the uh, summary of social housing assessments, which indicated where the, what the demand was in those uh, in those uh, settlements. So that's why we've structured the plan the way it is. Um, land, land is a constraint in certain areas and it is something Michael alluded to in his opening statement that we will be looking to in, in, in the very near future actually to meet, meet demand and um, it, certainly from an affordability perspective we think that the affordability uh, difficulty for people in Waterford is probably slightly higher outside of Waterford City uh, in, in towns like Tremor and Dunmore East and Dungarvan. 
you know, I think that'll be certainly true on the ground. I, I also wanted to talk to you about uh, the picture that we have in terms of above the shop living in Waterford. Uh, it, I mean, it comes with a whole host of co-benefits if we're talking about the, the decarbonisation programme under 2040 to bring people back into our city centres, um, even in terms of injecting a retail life and... Um, you know that the cities that the way that a lot of our cities, towns and cities throughout the country, die a death after six o'clock. Um, whereas if we bring people back into the city centre and encourage that city centre living, I know the repair and lease programme has concentrated on urban centres in particular. Um, but how far down the road, or what challenges are in front of us in terms of unlocking in a serious way the above the shop accommodation that exists? Not just in our cities, but I mean, I could talk about that in terms of our towns and villages as well, and and the type of um, urban renewal that we want to see in those places as well. What are the challenges, the constraints? What are the difficulties there? The, the core challenge, the core challenge is the economic recovery of those properties. Um, we are the proud owners of quite a number of older buildings, even in Waterford City and elsewhere in the county as well. And we've refurbished, we've a lot of experience in refurbishment, not just in the lease and repair scenario, but in terms of our own buildings. And one of the big issues with regeneration of older properties is the costs are actually far greater than our build, is the reality. And there's a real dilemma there in terms of achieving that. Our overall strategy is to work from the out to the possible starting out, so things like the lease and repair scheme. Uh, and to gradually build that, to get new builds in the core city centre, because until you build the community back again, you you won't increase the demand. It's it's a sort of virtuous circle if you can get it going on that basis. So it's anything we can do purposefully at the moment to actually get more people occupying the core centres of our towns, our cities, uh, is what we're trying to do, but working with the art of the possible. The biggest difficulty is probably the one over the shop where there's poor access, if you know what I mean. All the fire safety regulations, joining them up to get some bit of scale in them and stuff like that, they're immensely complex and difficult. Um, thank you, Chair. Appreciate it.